Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl here with a project for cat scrappiness. In today's video I'm going to be getting a little messy and creating a clean and simple card. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to make. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Lately, I have been trying to step out of my clean and simple comfort zone, but I still like to keep my projects clean and simple. So today, we're going to get a little bit inky and create a fun background for the card, but it's still going to be clean and simple with just a few embellishments and a couple colors. In front of me here are the main supplies that I'm going to be using. I have the Never Ending Rectangles in 5x7 the Simply Amazing with Shadow die set, Midnight Sky Pearl Mix, and what I like about these is there's kind of two different colors on the pearls, and so later when I use my Versa marker, I'm going to be embossing with some silver embossing powder. I will have all these products linked in the description box below, as well as the entire Cat Scrappiness store. They have lots of brands and products there. I know that you'll love to look around. If after seeing the process, I leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. We're gonna get started today with the ink smushing, which is the messy part. For this, I have a teal ink pad, a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth that is five by seven and a laminated piece of cardstock for my palette. All I do is smush my ink pad onto the laminated piece a few times and then I bring in that little mister and just put enough water on there so the ink kind of flows freely. Once it is flowing freely on my palette, I take my piece of 5x7 cardstock and just press it down into the ink. And then I will turn it over, kind of see what areas might need more ink, and just keep tapping it down in there until I like the way it looks. Now I want to help this dry a little bit because I want to add some more layers, so I brought in my heat tool and spent some time drying it. I just keep moving the heat around and turning the cardstock. Sometimes a drip will come off the bottom, but since my work surface is protected, it's no big deal. Once this is dry enough, I go ahead and I add some more color using the same ink that is on the palette. This just lets you get some darker areas and lighter areas, and where they kind of dry in a line, you get kind of like um, a geode effect, I guess. I don't know what to call it. There's just darker areas of the background. Here's a look at the finished piece after two layers of color and both of those being dried. Cleanup is pretty easy. I just bring in the tea towel I keep in my craft area and I wipe down the laminated piece and that clear cutting mat. Next, I brought in those 5x7 rectangles dies and I chose the second from the largest to cut down this piece. I just wanted it so I would have a nice even border all around this and the 5x7 card base. Then for a little inner frame, I grabbed the fifth and sixth from the largest and I started by centering the fifth one in the piece that I cut out. Now you could always kind of angle this so you don't have to get it exactly centered, but I went ahead and tried to do my best getting it centered at right angles in there. To hold the die in place, I use a couple pieces of low tack scotch tape and I can run this through my machine and then it peels up without taking off any of the top of the cardstock. I use those same two pieces of tape to take the other die, which was a six from the largest, and cut a piece out of the center of the inside that I just cut. This is gonna leave me with a thin frame that I'm actually going to put to the side and I will use later. 
And speaking of later, make sure to keep watching. I will be sharing kind of the sample I made yesterday using this background technique and the Versa marker embossing pen. And speaking of that, it is now time for me to show you how I'm going to use that. The Versamark pen is just like the Versamark ink pad, except you can draw with it and then use embossing powder on top of it. What I want to do here is take some of those dark lines in my background and trace those with the pen, and then I place that detail silver embossing powder onto it and tap it off. Now the only downfall to the tape I used to hold my dies is it did leave a little bit of sticky residue behind. So I just pulled in my dry brush and I brushed that excess powder away before I heat set this with my tool. While I work on drawing more lines and embossing them, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with a QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions so we can get to know a little bit more about each other. Today's question is based upon some of the things I'm doing in the video and I would like to know, have you ever tried ink smooshing or embossing with a Versamark pen? You can let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. I have done the ink smooshing technique or how I made the background a few times, but I will tell you I have had this Versamark pen for years and I'm not sure if I've ever used it more than once or twice. But now that I have enjoyed it for today's project, I do hope to get it out more often. Here's a close up look at the finished embossing on the inner piece and the frame. I just like the little sparkle it adds. Off camera, I cut and folded a 5x7 card base and a piece of silver foil cardstock to 5x7. I'm going to be placing the silver foil cardstock on the front of the card and it will fill it completely. What I want is just a little bit of this silver to peek out from behind my ink smushed background. When that is in place, I'm going to put down the frame and center it as best as I can. Now I am adding some extra adhesive on this. Normally I would have just went around once, but because it is a little bowed from all of the water and heat embossing, I did put a little extra on there. I did the same thing with the middle part, and for both of these pieces, I did make sure that they were in place before I pressed them down too hard. Next, it was time to get my sentiment ready. Once again, I'm using the Simply Amazing with Shadow Die set, and I will be cutting the shadow from a scrap of vellum and the words from some of that same silver foil cardstock. Now, I do have the dots cut out for the eyes, but I did leave those over on the cutter for now just so I didn't lose them. To hold these in place, I'm going to be using some art glitter glue and I just put some thin lines and dots on the back of the words and carefully place those onto the vellum backer. Once both of the words are in place, I set a couple stamp blocks on top of this and let it dry for about five minutes. Now you don't see me do it, but I did go back and put the dots on the eyes because I did originally forget that. Off camera, I added that thin frame to the inside of the card that I had left over from the front. And now I'm going to place down my sentiment, once again using art glitter glue and doing my best to hide the adhesive behind the letters so it doesn't show through the vellum. But with this background, I think even if some kind of oozes out, it'll be okay because there is variation in color on that background. Once it's in place, I let it dry for five minutes and then it's time to add my bling. I got out my cat scrappiness embellishment box and chose the Midnight Sky Pearl Mix. I like that the dark blue in this kind of matches the darkest blues in my background and then there's another color that looks kind of like a dark silver. I placed I think five or six of those onto my card front with my fingers and once everything was in place 
I brought back in my glitter glue and I adhered these down. Now what I do is put a small dot of glue, I count to about 10, and then I place my pearl on top of it. I just think this helps that glue get tacky and hold on to each of those. After those had had time to dry, here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card and as I mentioned earlier I did practice this background technique yesterday and here is the card I made using that. Let me know in the comment section below if you would like to see how I made this one. If you enjoyed today's video, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.